Hey folks, and welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel. When it comes to traction, manufacturers sell you on two different systems, all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. But honestly, what the heck is the difference these days? Well, that's exactly what we want to pick apart in this video. So we have a pair of Nissans, a Rogue and a Frontier, and our brand new rollers right there. And we're going to break down the differences truly between all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. We're actually using our new set of rollers here. Now, you've probably seen these on YouTube before. I'm gonna give a shout out to Roman over at TFL. He really turned me on to these rollers. Now, these simulate no traction. So you're able to really test the vehicle and see where it can send its power. So first up, we have the Nissan Rogue. This is a Rogue SV all-wheel drive. And the first test we're gonna do is we're gonna put one roller under the passenger side front wheel, and then we'll put another roller between the driver side rear wheel. Now, like most all-wheel drive systems, these are open differentials, which means that the power is gonna go to the wheel on the roller. The question is, how does the vehicle deal with this. How quickly does it send the power to the other wheels? Does it even send the power? And ultimately, can it get itself off the roller? So we're going to do that test first, then we'll put three rollers under it and see if it can get off that, and then we'll put the Frontier up and talk about four-wheel drive. But for now, all-wheel drive testing, let's get to it. Okay, so Rogue is in normal mode. I'm in drive. I'm going to lift off the throttle here, and we'll see what happens. Well, she just walked right off, which is actually a good sign, meaning that power was getting to the wheels it was supposed to get to right away. I'm surprised there wasn't a little bit more slippage out of it. So you know what? Let's make it even harder on the Rogue. We're going to put three wheels on rollers now and see what it does. So the only tire in contact with the ground is that rear passenger side right there. And you know what? That means that the Rogue has to figure out a way to get power just to that one wheel. And let's see what happens. We're going to start off in normal mode. There it is, there it is, and boom! It was spinning, spinning, and then what it did, and I can try to look back at the GoPro footage, but it will activate the brake on that rear driver side wheel to send power to the passenger. Now, was that good? It was absolutely good for an all-wheel drive system. Kudos to the Rogue. But now we got to talk about why that was different than what's going to happen with a true four-wheel drive system. And for that, we need the Nissan Frontier. So let's jump in that now. Before we put the Frontier on the rollers, watch it driving off-road while I explain one other fundamental difference between all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. In an all-wheel drive system, power is sent to a center differential or some type of clutch pack, which will then split the power to the front and the rear. In that setup, the system decides where the power goes. In a four-wheel drive vehicle, the power is sent through a transfer case. In two-wheel drive, that transfer case is just sending its power to the rear axle, and then when in four-wheel drive, the transfer case will split the power between the rear axle and the front axle. Another big difference, the majority of vehicles which have a transfer case also have a four-wheel drive low range setting, and a low range is going to allow you to get high torque and high power at low wheel speeds. Now let's go put the Frontier on the rollers and you can see the difference. With a four-wheel drive vehicle, you have two-wheel drive, four high, four low, traction control, and then in this case, a rear locking differential. And the driver needs to understand which setting it should be in and how all of those things are going to act when combined. On the flip side, you saw it in the Nissan Rogue. These days, we just have drive modes. You tell it it's a normal day, it's a rainy day, it's a snowy day, and then you just set it and forget it and you let the vehicle do it itself. Now the advantage to that all-wheel drive, I just said it, there's no thinking required. You hit the button and you just drive. With four-wheel drive, yeah, you have to understand what's going on here, but this system is going to act exactly how you expect it to because there's no computers making decisions for you. You put it in four and it's gonna be in four-wheel drive. And now let's put it up on the rollers and I'll show you the differences. 
now it's time for our first setup. I have one roller under the driver side rear wheel. Now in two wheel drive, this truck is rear wheel drive and without the locker on, that differential back there is open. What that means is that the tire that is slipping should get all the power. So traction control is off and in theory, I should go absolutely nowhere right now. Let's see how it works. Here we go. We should not go anywhere. So there you go, you get the idea. Two wheel drive with traction control off, you're not going anywhere. Now I mentioned the rear diff locker, but with this Nissan Frontier, and honestly with most modern off-road trucks, you can't use the rear locker, or even the front locker if there is one, unless you're in four wheel drive, and in this case, unless you're in four low. So basically Nissan says, if you wanna lock up, you gotta go down to four low. And if I was to put it in four low with the locker, this is gonna walk off any combination of rollers. So we can't do that. What I'm gonna show you now is what the truck looks like with traction control on and how traction control works here. And what I'm mostly curious to see is if this is any quicker or slower than the Rogue was. So let's see what it does. Okay. When you're ready. Now comes the tough test for the Frontier. We have three wheels on rollers. There's only one wheel in contact with the ground. That is the rear driver's side. You can see passenger side, they're all rollered up. So we want to test the four wheel drive system here. What I've done is I've put the truck into four high and I've taken the traction control off. So once again, it should go nowhere because what's gonna happen, front wheels are both gonna roll, the rear wheels are gonna to try to get power, but power should only go to the wheel without traction. Let's see what happens. And just so you know, we're gonna do this one in reverse. My driveway's on a bit of a hill, so it likes to come off the rollers thanks to the hill. Reverse seems to show it off better. Same concept though. Well, that did not go exactly as I had planned. I thought with traction control off, this tire wouldn't get any power, but the truth is that the slipping tire in the rear is gonna get the majority of the power, most of it. This tire though, right from the get-go, was getting a little bit of power. And the other truth here is that the rollers we have aren't set up quite yet. I wanna cut another roller out to add more resistance to make it harder for the vehicle to come off of them. But still, I think the takeaway here is that four-wheel drive is always sending its power to all four wheels. If you get slip, it might not be perfect, but still you're getting that power. In the Rogue, it had to really let that wheel slip and then decide to send the power before I came off the rollers. And then this might go without saying too, but then in the Frontier, if I went down to four low and locked up this differential, it's gonna absolutely walk off because it is not only sending power to this wheel, but it's a 50-50 split. So both your rears are getting even power. And that's always gonna be your best situation, especially when you're off-road. Well, folks, we have arrived at the end of this one. Now, the first thing I wanna say, we just got these rollers. We're gonna keep on refining this process, making them better so we can keep bringing these tests to you. Now, what's the big takeaway on all-wheel drive versus four-wheel drive? Well, first of all, all-wheel drive these days is better than ever, and in my opinion, it's about 80% of a four-wheel drive system. But look, if you want a system that is locked in with the settings that you put into it, you're just not gonna get that out of all-wheel drive. You gotta go four-wheel drive. Now, is there a better system here? No, it just depends on what works for you. Well, folks, that's it for this video. Now, of course, I want you to go below. Let me know what you think. What do you prefer, all-wheel or four-wheel? As always, why don't you hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member, and then come right back here to Truck King to see what we're testing next. See ya.